Yeah. <laughs> uh, something smooth yet sinister. Coming through to diminish you. And this here's the finisher. <laughs> Check it out. Uh. Hello, guys. It is your boy Trey coming back at your screen by means of the Worldwide Web. And today, for you guys, what we're going to get into since the in game news is just taking this poor time to load. I don't understand how I end a quest mode hitting X in the upper right corner in almost every freaking video. Anyways, what we're getting into today, guys, is going to be the newest addition to Frontier Gate. Alright, and what I mean by that is the Endless Corridor. Alright, so, uh, got a new dungeon up in here, which pretty much goes on forever, basically, until you lose. Uh, which eventually, it, it will happen. Alright, they get stronger uh, each and every time you clear a room. So uh, eventually defeat will come. It's just a matter of when, okay? So here's the lowdown on this dungeon, guys. All right. The main goal you want to reach on this dungeon is to clear uh, the 100th room or floor, or whatever you want to call it. All right. You do still get rewards up to floor 200. Um, granted, it's a lengthy grind in order to get those rewards, and it's full of stuff that you can pretty much already get fairly easily anyway. But, I'll go ahead and let you guys know what's going on here. So, you see here, for every 10 floors that you clear, you'll get a reward, alright? So, the re the main reward you want is on the 100th floor, guys, alright? You see here, growth device, alright? That's the one you want, alright? That is a pretty freaking nice secondary sphere for you, right there. But, if you want to keep on grinding, you can get all the way up to floor 200, way down here, alright? Me personally, you're gonna see me. I stopped at 110. All right, the main reason I did, I actually got up to like the 113th floor, and then I just got tired of it, so I quit. All right, it's basically what I did. <laughs> okay, so uh, if you want, you can go ahead and try to keep grinding all the way down. You get some decent stuff. All right, sphere frogs, burst emperors, almighty imp artens, and all that. Like I said, stuff that's already not really the most difficult to get, but if you want to put in the time, um, it's not that difficult to do, all right? It's just a never-ending grind is basically all it is up to uh, floor 200. So, I do want to let you know real quick what the two spheres that you get out of here does. The first sphere you get on the 50th floor is called the Heavenly Ring. And what that sphere does, it gets all status ailments, 20% boost to defense and max HP, and probable random status ailment infliction while when attacked, all right? So, um, you get a 7% chance to inflict the attacker with curse paralysis or poison, and then a 10% chance to inflict the attacker with weak, sick, and injury, right? So, pretty decent sphere, all right? I personally put it on my al mainly for negating status ailments, all right? Um, one of the few reasons I use al for is to remove and negate status ailments, which he can do as long as you have uh, his reddish staff sphere equipped to him. Good stuff. All right. Then secondly, and the beastly sphere of this batch is called the growth device. You get that by clearing the 100th floor. All right. Now what this sphere does, it negates critical damage, 30% boost to all stats. So that's attack, defense, recovery, and max HP there. And then damage taken considerably boosts BB gauge, and that's about 3 to 4 BCs when attacked. All right. Now that sphere I personally put on my Krantz, all right? And it got my Krantz looking real good, baby. Um, the Krantz, the man, boy. All right, so now that we got the rewards out the way, uh, let's go ahead and try to slide through a few floors for you guys, all right? There is no freaking way I'm going to record all 200 floors. I, I apologize in advance, guys. It's just not gonna happen. Like, that'll take me freaking forever. This jump takes a long time to get through. So I'll just give you a basic strategy of the boss fights that you basically need to watch out for pay a little bit more attention than usual and after that just whatever guys alright so let me show you guys the squad that I use and why so we started this thing all with cool you leader alright we use cool you mainly because I think he has one of the best leader skills right now alright he get a 50% boost to defense and max HP boost defense and recovering HP is low and the key of it, he completely negates status ailments and elemental damage, all right? Beautiful stuff there. I really like that. So I don't got to worry about elemental or status ailments at all. It's out the window, all right? There's only one unit in this entire uh, endless corridor rotation that can lock leader skills. And it will only happen 
if you don't watch out for the most, the enemy's powerful attack, which I will explain in this video a little bit later, right? Now, my cool you is also enhance to give us a couple of good buffs. Firstly, HP every time he uses BB or SBB, he gives us HP. Secondly, he uh, gives us BB gauge when attacked, all right? Another fairly useful buff to try to help us keep four BB gauges, okay? Now, next fool in the squad is Zero, all right? Now, the main reason I use Zero uh, primarily is for spark damage boost, all right? Uh, the spheres I got on them aren't the greatest. I just kind of threw something on them just to help them out a little bit. But uh, it's mainly his uh, boost and spark damage, all right? I got my Zero Enhanced to give us the 130% boost and spark damage when he uses his BB and his SBB, all right? So beautiful stuff there. All right, it also helps that he gives spark and uh, vulnerability, and it also helps that he gives us the buff that gives us HP when we deal spark damage, all right? So pretty much with this squad I'm using after every turn, we get right back to full HP. It's like no doubt. They're all back to full HP by the time uh, the turn's over. So uh, that buff definitely helps us out. Now on to the next unit, all right? So the next unit in the rotation is Magus, all right, which you can interchange with Krantz or even Juno Seto. Whatever mitigator you got that gives two turns of mitigations, um, I leave that up to you. Um, I just use my boy Magus um, not only for the two turn mitigation, but also uh, the uh, boost and dark elemental damage, all right. I got Magus as well as Zero. All right, so I got two dark units here getting increased damage thanks to that dark elemental damage boost. So good stuff, all right. But mainly for two turns of mitigation so whatever unit you got that does that just plop them in that spot you'll be a-okay next unit on the list is my man serious all right serious my boy one of the best ubbs in the game right now I go to my boy serious my opinion all right got some pretty stout spheres on the two these are two pretty freaking nice spheres man and they make my series look real good boy and on top of that, Sirius always fills his BB gauge back up to full from pure spark damage. Because I got all this stuff on him that uh, gives BB gauge on spark. And he just fills up, man. In like four or five sparks, he got full SBB gauge. It's ridiculous. All right. But anyway, uh, main reason we use Sirius, all right, um, his SBB. The attack, defense, and recovery boost is definitely nice. All right. The light and dark element is a nice plus as well. But um, another main reason we use the guy is for that BB gauge boost on Spark, all right? And I have him with the enhancement to where instead of it just being 1 to 2 BCs on Spark, it is 2 to 3 BCs on Spark, all right? That BB attack boost also helps us with the uh, dishing out some damage. So a serious, definitely a good guy. Uh, his UBB is, is very good though, guys, all right? There are a few battles in here where... I do recommend you uh, use UBBs, all right, and just just to be safe, all right. It's not that these, well, a majority of the ones I'm going to explain to you, they aren't automatic nukes, all right. But it will definitely save you from taking the chance of of getting nuked, all right. So, um, a UBBs like Sirius will definitely come in handy for you, all right. Um, he gives a huge boost to attack, defense, and recovery. Three turns of 75% mitigation, BB attack boost. And he gives 50 BCs per turn on some BBOT type stuff, all right? So, serious, man. That freaking, uh, his UBB is just great. Highly useful for this. All right. And then, moving on to the next unit in line here. As far as the squad I'm using is my girl, Lara, all right? So, Lara got some pretty decent spheres on her as well. Two nice stiff spheres there. All right, but the main reason we are using Lara, guys... She, uh, her SBB, all right. Her SB is freaking good. It's nice. Um, I, I will admit, I didn't see the worth in this unit until I actually obtained her and used her, all right. And man, she's pretty nice, all right. One of the most important buffs that I'm starting to realize since I've been using her, one of the most important buffs as far as difficult or lengthy fights is getting HP when attacked, all right. That probability of getting that HP restored when attack is great it basically in a sense increases your max HP guys It's very 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 useful especially when you get hit by heavy attacks that's supposed to knock off like 80 or 90 percent of your freaking HP and you end up healing some of that jump back it's like man that's nice 
So uh, that buff is definitely great. She also negates critical damage for you. So you couple that with Koyu's leader skill. And man, you're pretty much shutting down everything an enemy can throw at you besides high attack, man. <laughs> like, you got, you know, you don't have to worry about status ailments. You don't have to worry about elemental damage. And with her, now you don't have to worry about critical damage. So it's, it's wonderful uh, teamwork right there. And then lastly, I do love the fact that she can boost attack and defense based on recovery. All right, that's beautiful as well. Which does stack with your regular attack and defense boost. So that that's very helpful stuff. All right, she also gives you HOT, which in in this endless corridor, I, I don't think you really need at all. I don't think it's a requirement. Not that I can think of anyway. But uh, that's the squad that I'm rolling with, guys. All right, got us through this pretty good. I'm using my Omni Arc friend here. This is who I ran through it all with. If you got Omni Arc, man, that his leader skill is beast due to the damage mitigation for two turns after taking a certain amount of damage. All right, that's the main thing. 50% boost to stats is definitely nice. 100% boost to spark damage is nice. But basically, what it boils down to is that uh, mitigation very helps. All right, so. Enough of the chit chat. I'm going to clear a few floors for you guys. Um, basically, while I explain the enemies that you need to watch out for during your run of at least the first 100 floors of this jump, guys. All right. So, um, going to go ahead and get this thing kicked off. I'll let you know what to look out for, when to look out for it. And then uh, you can go ahead and at least make your run of the first 100 floors. If you want to make your run of the 200th floor, um, that's completely up to you. Just put on your patience cap, all right? You can pause in between if you get caught up with something, but it's going to it's gonna take you a while, okay? I just got tired of doing it, me personally, so I just went ahead and said scratch it. Maybe I'll try again another day. I don't know. I just got tired of it. <laughs> I thought I had the manpower. That's why I went, uh, or the willpower. That's why I went past uh, the 100th floor, but after that, I was just like, forget it. Alright, so let me go ahead and break down to you guys the few battles you need to worry about. Alright, the first one I will speak about is uh, the Rize squad. Rise, Rize, whatever you want to call her, the Thunder Unit 7 star. That she has a squad of four of her, okay? Um, they hit pretty freaking hard, alright? So if you want to, um, you can definitely use UBB on the first turn just to be safe, alright? As long as you kill at least one of them, you increase your survivability by a ton, and you won't really have to worry about um, the, that battle the, for the rest of the duration of it. Just knock out one of them, and you can pretty much survive from there on out, especially with an arc friend, all right, with the mitigation. All right, now the second one you need to look out for, I'm going to try to throw off to the left side of the screen for you. Um, it's a big black dragon. I believe his name is Garn, all right? Now, what you need to watch out for this guy, Garns has an attack called Ultimate Cannon. And if you don't have 75% mitigation, um, you are going to take quite a hit, all right? And it does have the potential to one-shot your entire squad. I don't believe it's guaranteed, but it does have the potential. So what you want to do when you come up against Garns, okay? Usually when you get them to about 50% HP, He's going to say something along the lines of, man, human beings have become so strong and all that. And then he's not going to do anything, all right? On that turn, that is when you are going to want to go ahead and overdrive, pop a Fujin, and then go ahead and get whatever unit you choose to use with three turns of 75% mitigation. I personally use Sirius because I think his is just great, all right? But uh, you use him. And then he's going to use his ultimate cannon. He's going to hit you. It's not going to really hurt at all with 75% mitigation. Coupled on top of the 50% from whatever mitigation unit you're using regularly. All right. Not going to do very much damage. And then the turn after that, he's going to have to recharge. So he's not going to do anything. And then the turn after that, he's going to blast it off again. All right. So what you want to do um, when he first says that human beings has become strong, you want to make sure you don't have to taste that ultimate cannon more than twice, all right? Because afterwards, you're going to be out of 75% mitigation, and on that fifth turn, he's going to wreck you, all right? He's either going to wipe you out or hurt you really bad. So try to get it done within that time frame, guys, and you'll be A-OK. -okay. Now, the next fool you need to worry about, um, I'll try to put off to the left side as well, Sea King Ordus Derva, all right? 
Um, the main thing you need to worry about with this guy, um, he does have pretty powerful single target attacks, all right, but it's nothing you need to concern yourself with. Um, it does not have the potential to kill from full HP. It is a, a percentage based attack. I want to say like 80 to 90 percent, something like that with mitigation, I believe it is. So it's going to hurt, but it alone should not kill you if you have full HP, okay? Now, uh, when you get the guy around 40 percent HP, he's going to say something along the lines of you shall vanish as foam, all right? And when he says that, on the next turn, he intends to do a super powerful nuking attack, which I do recommend. Once again, 75% mitigation for it, right? Um, just like Garns, it does have the potential to kill, all right? And you don't want to lose any units. So 75% mitigation from that point in the battle, and hopefully on to the end will save you from having to deal with that, all right? Excellent stuff. So after that, um, he has no more tricks up his sleeve, so just go ahead and try to wipe him on out, and you can move on to the next part of the battle. Alright, now pretty much the last one you're going to need to worry about is going to be the 100th battle against Lucius, alright? Now, I'm pretty sure you all know how Lucius looks, but this is the multifarious Lucius form, so I'm going to just go ahead and throw it off to the left side of the screen anyway for you guys so you know who I'm talking about. But Lucius comes out on the 100th battle, alright? Now, the only thing you really need to worry about with Lucius, well, there's two things in the Lucius battle, actually, okay? Um, battle, or when you get Lucius, I want to say to about 40%, um, he's going to say a message. I can't remember what the message is offhand, alright? But he's going to say a message, and then after that message, uh, he's not going to do anything, okay? After that, um, I'm pretty sure you guys may remember this from fighting Lucius in the past. But after that, Lucius and plans to uh, plans to come with the glorious attack. All right, which definitely has the potential to knock you straight the heck out. All right, so you're definitely going to want to make sure you be careful about that. You don't want to taste that glory. So what you're going to have to do is on that turn where Lucius spits the message and doesn't do anything, have you be be ready. All right. Have your UBB ready, and as soon as that happens, you use it. All right. If you use the UBB, it will completely negate the glorious. All right. Lucius won't even do it. I can't remember exactly what it'll say a message, and then he won't even use it. All right. So that's one thing out of the way, and you won't have to worry about pretty much for the rest of the battle. All right. Now, the next time you need to worry about old Lucius is when you get uh. It's a percentile, I want to say 25%. Um, when you get Lucius down to 25%, um, by the way, I remember, um, at 40%, Lucius says gathering energy. When Lucius says gathering energy, that's the turn you want to go ahead and overdrive use UBB, all right? But now at 25%, when you get Lucius past that HP threshold, make sure you pay attention. Because it's going to come in the middle of Lucius's attacks. And if you don't see the message, you're not really going to know it's coming, alright? You can play it safe, but um, it'll just make the battle take longer. But what you want to look out for, guys, is when Lucius shows a message saying an ominous feeling is in the air. Alright? Now, from that mess when that message shows up, from that point on in the battle, you do not use all of your units BB or SBB, alright? Make one attack, make one guard, whatever you want to do, but make sure that all of your units don't use SBB or BB, alright? If that junk happens, Lucius will use an attack called Assimilation, and it will pretty much wipe you out. It's, it's pretty freaking strong, okay? Um, it ignores damage mitigation, and it hurts, alright? I'm not sure if it's an automatic wipe, but I know it definitely has the potential to wipe your entire squad out. So you don't want to risk it. Alright, so make sure for the rest of the battle, just make one unit attack, guard, whatever you want to do. But just make sure they don't all use BB or SBB, alright? And as long as you do that, you'll be in the green, alright? You'll pass battle 100. Every battle after that is just going to be the, the same as always. You won't run into Lucius again, but every other unit you will, alright? Now my strategy for running through this 
on the first 50 battles all right so once you complete battle 50 um the ones before that you could just pick whatever perk you want all right but every battle after that i brought the item set main reason being um you don't know when you're going to run into orders derby you don't know when you're going to run into garns you want to make sure you don't get caught off guard and unable to use your ubb all right so if you bring the item set um you get a couple helpful things first you get a full revive which is great but more importantly you get fujins all right so um I brought the item set from then on out and it worked just dandy for me, okay? So, I um, highly recommend you definitely bring the item set. But, um, other than that, guys, I think that pretty much does it. Alright, so just run on through that junk, man, and knock it out, dude. There's, there's nothing to it. Um, it's just going to take you some time, alright? If you wish to go past 100, I leave that entirely up to you. All right, but there are a lot of sphere frogs, burst emperors, and artens in it for you if you uh, feel you want to grind to get them. But uh, other than that, it's pretty much going to wrap this one up, guys. So hope you found it helpful, enjoyable. Hope it helped you out. All right. Um, if you wish to join the Facebook group, link down below in the description. If you like the video, be sure to leave a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for more Brain Frontier content. And uh, I will be back at you guys soon. All right. So uh, thanks for watching, hanging out, checking out the video, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.